Founders Abbey approached me to ask me to make some work for some of their follies which are scattered around the estate. I chose two of them, the Banqueting Hall and the Temple of Piety, because they are in polar opposition. The Banqueting Hall is part of the Empire of the Senses area of the gardens. And then down at the Temple of Piety, which is opposite the Banqueting House on the other sides of the lake, there's a building which is dedicated to God and to your country and to your parents. So it's all about filial responsibility and civic responsibility. In here, I wanted to make a piece of work which kind of formally reflected the grounds outside and then dealt with the story of Roman charity, which is the old guy who's imprisoned and is not allowed to eat or drink anything, and his daughter comes in and sneakily gives him milk from her breast which sustains him. Eventually the, 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 the guards, they, they catch on to what's going on, but they're so impressed by this act of filial devotion that they let it happen. And I think he gets released partially because of it, so that this little story becomes emblematic of devotion to your parents and by extension devotion to your, your country. And it's seen as being the ultimate act of filial devotion. In this instance, I wanted to make a work that um, reflected the mirror moon ponds outside the Temple of Piety. My work is like a circular mirror, same as the circular ponds outside, it mirrors. And it's also got this aperture in the top, so it's a little bit like an eye. It's like the shape of an eye where an image comes in through the aperture and forms inside. And it's also a little bit like a breast, this figure with like a little nipple on top. So it's a kind of combination of those different elements. And then inside the mirrors, I have a small sculpture of Simon and Perez, which appears as an optical illusion. So the thing is not really there. It's something that's conjured up. It's this kind of state of mind, charity, something that we're supposed to aspire to. And it's viewed through this barrier, which function as like prison bars, so that when you're looking at this little scene, it's like you're being represented with that original scene. You're outside and you're peeping in slightly voyeuristically at this little intimate and quite illicit scene that, that's going on there. The optical illusion in the banqueting house is far more um, calculated and um, mischievous in a way. There's a lot more trickery going on in that. So you're looking at a three-dimensional zoetrope that is essentially grouped around the shape of a chandelier. And the chandelier works quite well because it would have been a centerpiece in a room like the banqueting house. And it adds a little opulence to the scene. And it also gives me quite a, um, a good skeleton to hang my 184 different figures on. Lots of little naked figures, they're like statues that have come to life. They're eating, drinking, fighting, pole dancing, peeing, in various stages of debauchery. I think the, the banqueting house, it was all about like kind of um, forgetting all your kind of day-to-day -day problems and indulging in food, drink, conversation and then maybe a little bit of um, physical pleasures. Um, so it's all about escape and, um, and that mischief is kind of part of that. But it was also the, the, the layers of meaning that I became aware of when I was looking at the place and reading about it that initially apparently that this whole garden and the buildings in it were like a big um, finger to the government of the time. The, the guy who designed the whole thing used to be the treasurer and then he got sent to the Tower of London. Eventually he was released and he came up here. But he was kind of excluded from that London aristocratic life. So he set about designing uh, these gardens that both um, illustrated how pious and good he was as a person, but also said, I can have a bit of fun. I like to party sometimes. Those are all quite interesting things to think that somebody conjured up this great image. That for me was really quite stunning to see that and just to be a little part of it was um, a, a good opportunity.